Hi, welcome back. I'm Katie and on my channel I like to share um, recipes with you and ways that you can bless other people through food. And in this video I'm going to recreate the meal that I had at Magnolia Table, the farm breakfast. So let's get so, into it. So I had a crazy trip to Waco. I went uh, during the weekend where like the storm hit Waco and the snow hit and like I could tell you like a really long story about power going out in my hotel, flights getting canceled, a uh, three hour drive turning into 10 hours, all this boring stuff. But anyway, the day at Magnolia was amazing and we went to Magnolia table, which had like a two or three hour wait, insane. But it was worth it. The breakfast was amazing and I wanted to recreate it. Joanna has actually shared a lot of her recipes online. So I'll be using the ones that she shared and then kind of filling in the gaps with what I've come up with. And I think I nailed it. So let's get into it. The biggest unknowns to me was their tater tots. You get like this little mini frying pan full of these um, tater tots. You get like five big tater tots. And I had never made them but I found a recipe and I tweaked it and I tried it. And I think they turned out really cool. So here's what you do. You peel the potatoes and then you're gonna throw them in a pan, cover them with water like a little bit, like over an inch or so, and then you boil them. Um, when they come to a boil, then you wanna set a timer for 10 minutes. When those 10 minutes are up, you're gonna pull it off, drain the water off, and let it cool. They're not cooked all the way, but they're just right. So once it's cool enough to handle, you're gonna shred them all up, and they're pretty big shreds in their tater tot, so that's kinda what I did. I just used the large side of my grater. And then once I had it shredded, um, it was just a matter of adding in um, some seasoning. So I added in flour, um, and that's just kind of like a binder, and then salt and pepper and parsley. And you could add something else like onion powder I think would be really good. Um, but that's what I put in, and I'll put the quantities I used down below. And You then want to take this potato mixture and shape it into balls. You want to make sure you pack them nice and tight so when they hit the oil, they do not break open. And then I went and I heated up um, some oil, probably a couple of inches of oil. And I used canola oil. Um, you could use vegetable oil or peanut oil or like a good frying oil. Wouldn't want to use like olive oil or anything like that. And then um, brought it to about 350 degrees and dropped those tater tots in and about two minutes on each side. Just cook them to their golden. And then I pulled them out and I drained them on a paper towel. And you guys, they were fantastic. 100% recommend 10 out of 10. Okay, so the next recipe I made was her biscuit recipe. Now, she has this on Magnolia Table and it's a free recipe, so I'll link it down below. Joanna Gaines knows biscuits. She is amazing. These biscuits are 100% the best biscuits I've ever made. I made them, I've been making them for a long time. Actually, um, they were in her first cookbook, so I've been making them for quite some time and they are the best. I quit making my other biscuits because they're that good. So, they're pretty, um, similar to a basic biscuit so you're gonna make or mix up your dry ingredients and she calls for self-rising flour I just usually use a substitute for self-rising flour because it's not something I buy special and So you're just gonna mix up the dry ingredients and then you're gonna add in butter I just cubed my butter before I threw it in and then usually I use a pastry cutter But I didn't have one today So I used two knives you can also just use your fingers to like work it in basically You're breaking the butter into little pieces and getting the flour all around it and you want it to be about pea size and then you add eggs in. And I think this is the difference maker. Not all recipes call for eggs and not um, for this many eggs. So I think that's part of the reason they're so good. And then you're going to, once that egg is just incorporated a little bit, then you're gonna add buttermilk. I don't keep buttermilk um, on hand. So what I just did is took milk and added like a teaspoon of vinegar um, to the milk that it called for. And you just let it sour like 10 minutes in advance and it's ready to go. And so then you just give it a mix. It should be a fairly wet dough. In fact, when I made it this day, it seemed a little bit too dry. So I added a splash of milk and then floured my surface, patted it out. Um, and then I don't own a biscuit cutter either. So I just used a glass and I floured that, um, just like dipped it into the flour and then cut out my biscuits, threw them on a parchment lined baking sheet. And I didn't have, I didn't have a pastry brush either, which sometimes we get so wrapped up in these like things we need to have. But all I did was I, whisk it together and then I took my fingers and I just like dipped and patted and dipped and patted and it actually worked like 100% fine. Bake those off and they should be nice and golden brown and you guys those are so bomb.com. Okay and the third recipe is for strawberry butter and I was just watching an episode of her show on the Magnolia Network or whatever on Discovery Plus and she made this butter so 
I am getting the authentic recipe. So what you want to do is you want to take two sticks of butter and you want to put them in your mixer and you want to put the whisk attachment on and you want to whip it like four or five minutes. And again, that'll be linked down below. She has a PDF with the biscuits and the strawberry butter in it. And once the butter's nice and light, add the jam and give it a whisk. You really don't need to whisk a bunch because it'll break up the strawberry bits that are in the preserves. So it's fine just to give it until it's incorporated and then stop and you've made strawberry butter. The next recipe is the sausage gravy. I'm going to be honest, I didn't follow her recipe because when I tasted it, it tasted just like normal sausage gravy, which is good. And I make sausage gravy, so I was like, I really don't need to follow the recipe. Also, her recipe called for butter. I bet that's good, but I just didn't get it. So. Here's how I make sausage gravy, and that recipe will down, be down in the PDF if you want to try her version. I thought mine tasted just the same. So what I do is I take a pound of sausage, and I brown it, just breaking it up until it's all brown. And then once it's all brown, I add in flour. So here's what I found is the secret. You have to get it completely dried out, and you want to do it gradually. So I started with a quarter cup of flour, and I sprinkle it over. And basically, you're trying to get all the fat to absorb with the flour. So you're stirring it, and it's, it's cooking at the same time, okay? And that's gonna help it thicken in a little bit and you're stirring and cooking and you want all that flour to disappear and kind of melt up with the sausage when you see that happening now when I put in just a quarter cup I noticed there was still kind of some glistening part for the fat hadn't had any flour on it basically we're making a roux here by the way and so then once I saw those parts I probably added in a couple more tablespoons so I would say approximately for a pound of sausage you'd use about a third of a cup of flour. Um, once I saw that everything was matte, there was no fat that didn't have flour on it, I knew I was ready to go. Everything was all absorbed. There was no like dry bits in there and I just took milk and I added it in and again you guys I didn't measure it. I would add um, and if you want to see her quantities again I'll have that link down below. Um, I just add it until it looks right. I know that's not that helpful, um, but the one thing is you can always add more. So add the milk and then you're going to let this cook for a couple minutes and bang, it's going to thicken up. And if you think it's too thick, add some milk and then cook it a little bit longer and it'll kind of get to a medium consistency. And then you want to salt and pepper it. You need salt and pepper and you'll probably, the people that are eating it, my family eats a lot of salt and pepper, so they'll probably do their own salt and pepper too. So that's the sausage gravy. I wanted to share my version because it's freeing not to use recipes. You can just look and see what the food looks like and add some and mix and it's, it's kind of fun. And then it was time to put everything together. Um, so just a quick side note, I made bacon and eggs. Bacon and eggs are not too interesting so I didn't really go into detail, especially eggs. I will say, if you are not baking your bacon, you are missing out. You do not make a mess. So what I do is I just put a piece of foil or parchment down I lay out my bacon. I set my oven to 400. I do not wait for it to preheat. I put my bacon in right away. That starts getting that fat off and makes it nice and crispy. Usually halfway through, so about 10 minutes in, I will flip the bacon and you just gotta keep an eye on it because all bacon is different thicknesses. So if it's thinner bacon, it's gonna take more like 12-ish minutes. And if it's thicker, it can go um, 18, 20, 22 minutes. So yeah, just keep an eye on it. I would flip it about eight to 10 minutes of the way through. And you guys, this makes the crispiest bacon with no mess, you just crumple up that aluminum foil, chuck it in the garbage can, and you're done. So, let's put this plate together. Put my plate out, and I dropped a biscuit on it, added the tater tots in a cute little bowl, and they actually use a mini cast iron pan. I really wanted to buy one of those, but like, I can't buy new things for every single video. So I dropped um, my gravy on it. By the way, this doesn't actually come with the meal. Our waitress talked us into ordering it, which she didn't have to talk very hard, but anyway. Uh, just a side note, if you go to Magnolia and you're expecting to get gravy with your farm breakfast, you're going to have to order it and pay extra. So, after you have the gravy on, you are then going to add a scoop of strawberry butter. And if you want it to look really professional, use a little uh, cookie scoop and put that on. And then, um, so then I put the eggs and the bacon and... Um, one thing that really amps this up, makes it look nicer, and makes it taste better is some green onions. So chopped green onions, put it on your tater tots. They do that at my early table and on the eggs. And I think it really brightens everything up, makes it taste good. And we just made the farm breakfast. It is delicious. You guys will not regret making this. If you want to throw on an episode of Fixer Upper and eat this, that's a great idea. And I am excited for you to make this. Please make this because this is a fun meal. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day no matter what time of day you eat it. 
If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, hit subscribe. And hopefully I'll be rolling out some Easter content here pretty quick.